Go to the mic, Krista. And we should let Saul know, and then we're starting. I'd like to call the order the, uh, the continuation of the City of Joliet Special Council meeting from April the 13th. It is 9 a.m. April 14th. We have roll call. Mayor Odekirk? Here. Councilman Dickinson? Here. Councilwoman Gavin? Here. Councilman Hug? Here. Councilman Morris? Here. Councilman Mudrin? Here. Councilwoman Coleman? Here. Councilwoman Reardon? Here. Councilman Turk? Here. Okay. Let the, let the record show that Councilman Dickinson, Councilwoman Gavin, Councilwoman Reardon, and Councilman Turk are all attending remotely. So this is a continuation of yesterday's um, public hearing regarding the Council Memo 222-20 resolution approving and authorizing execution of a pre-annexation agreement for 1,260 acres with Eastgate Logistics Park, Chicago LLC for Compass Business Park. All right, thank you. A couple points. Marty, um, I think we've got some emails from people that are not available to speak today. Yes. Can you tell us how we're going to handle that? Uh, sure, Mayor. Let's see if this is working. Hello? No. Hello? Hello? Oh, there we go. Sure, Mayor. We, so what we did last night is I, I shot out an email to, to those everyone who was on the list that provided an email address and we got quite a few responses back so we're working through the list right now backwards and i'll just i'm going to do it there's a lot of them so i'm going through them we're going to try to be as accommodating as we can i'll give an example this is one that we're going to be working on while the meeting is going on so it's all live lifetime here's an example i'm an essential worker and i'm working tomorrow i need my comment heard so this particular person i checked where they are on the list and they might be Call at some point this morning, so I'm responding back that we're going to move you to the end of the list. And then just a reminder to everyone that uh, I'm, I'm writing that in this particular one, you can also submit written comments so long as they are received prior to the conclusion of the hearing. So that's a reminder for people that, you know, because I'm guessing we're probably going to go through today, we're still not going to get through the list today. So just a reminder to everyone that if, if for some reason that they cannot provide their comp, their uh, verbal comments, they can always provide the written comments, and again, just like we did last time, turn them into PDFs, make them part of the record, send them to all counts. Okay, thank you. Mayor? Yes? If you don't mind, before we proceed, I would just like to say a few brief comments. Sure. I'm sure everybody up here um, got quite a bit of uh, feedback already last night. My phone, between text and phone calls, started immediately after they shut down on Channel 6, by the time I even left the chambers. And what I wanted to say up front is, number one, this is an extremely important decision. I don't need to say that. That's being repetitive. And there's not a person on this council that does not appreciate the fact that whatever the decision is ultimately, you know, either way, yes or no, it's going to affect people in good ways and ways that aren't so good or it'll make you know, some massive adjustments, um, be it in the budget, be it in personal life, depending on which way it goes. And I also will acknowledge, regardless of what side so far, that any individual from the city of Joliet or those concerned citizens beyond, the vast majority, while emotional at times, are being mature and sincere about it. And I think we've all gotten their emails and, you know, that most of them are reasonable and they really believe firmly and have legitimate concerns and we're, we're listening to them. I want to reassure them. We do have so much misinformation and twisted facts, sometimes outright lies that are going on out there. And we need to address them. We need to address some of the behavior that, you know, just indicates that most people are sincerely invested in this for their personal reasons and their family. Some people think it's a game. Some people think that they got to intimidate. There was an alert citizen who apparently drove by last night before the meeting, about 4.30, 4 quarter to 5. And this individual wanted to see if there was going to be, you know, everybody, is going to be any action, right? And this individual did a show as we all walked in, drove up and walked in, there was a, a short bearded man in a black SUV that was taking either pictures or videos uh, with his phone of each of us driving up, parking, and walking in. She got the license plate number, and I directed to her to go ahead and give it to the police. Um, we have people out there. There, there is, a, there is a, an individual who, it's amazing because this individual's a lawyer, therefore I'm sure they're educated, um, who was repeatedly saying 
both here in the chambers a month ago, and this is an important point, as well as on an uh, uh, impromptu or informal uh, Facebook, uh, I guess you would call it, press conference. And you all heard her say this. Joliet could be out of water in one in six years. That is a complete fabrication. I talked with our director of public uh, utilities this morning, just to, to double back. And actually, we have a very complicated modeling that has been done by the Illinois Water Survey and the engineers in our department. Long and the short of it, it doesn't change the fact that it's still predicted we, could, we would be out of water, like out of water in 30 years, but unable to meet peak demand in 10 to 15 years. Right. Same thing applies even when you put the North Point project into it. And I think when we finish this, we'll have Allison Swisher, the director, she'll give a brief presentation because people have mentioned that. And then you have people out there, knowingly or unknowingly, giving false information. There was another individual, it was very interesting, saying that in, his, in, in a job he used to have, it took him down to Kansas City quite a bit, so he's very familiar through that job. He's very familiar with uh, the project, and when he was down there, people said, you don't want to mess with those, you know, get involved with those people. The problem is, correct me if I'm wrong, North Point was created in about 2012, and they started in 2013 building in Kansas City. He retired from that job in 2007. I found it on his LinkedIn page. He called me when I, I messaged him and said, why are you being dishonest? And he was scared. He was scared because he got caught. My point is I want to reassure the people that are listening and watching that we, in fact, are listening to them. We will continue to listen to them. Yes, at times you'll see somebody get up. The mayor might be getting up because this is a new uh, meeting format that we've never done before. He might be checking with legal counsel, with, with the, the city clerk, with one of the, the council members to keep this meeting going along and make sure there's no glitches. And the same applies to people here. And you might see some, some members get up and stretch their legs after an extended time. But you are being heard. Even when we get up and walk away and you don't see us on camera and we're stretching our legs walking out there in, in the audience, we're listening. This entire room has speakers and we can hear you. So don't let the, those that, that show some kind of a meanness or immaturity or maybe even a mental health issue that like to lie and twist things, put pictures on the, on, online that are, are misleading and lie about the pictures knowingly. You know, one individual did that to one of these council members apparently last night. I got a bunch of texts and calls about that. The most interesting text about that individual I got was the one that put that picture up and tried to lie about the council person. Apparently he's got his own, his own demons. He's an alcoholic and he's got mental issues. So we got to be careful, but I, we're going to plug ahead and everybody's going to be heard. And I just wanted to clear the air. No, it doesn't impact the water. We had to get a new water system before North Point, And if we approve it, we'll have to get it after North Point. It doesn't matter in the same time frame. So I hope I've uh, clarified a few points, and that's all I have for now, Mayor. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I, there's a lot to be said, but there, there has been an active misinformation campaign, um, and you know, I think we all saw it when we went to Kansas City. That was, that was an eye-opener. But I would say uh, I'll compliment um, most of it were people from the South. I thought the comments last night were, were generally on point, and, and that they were valid points of discussion, so hopefully it continues that way. I, I was encouraged by what we heard last night, so. I was too, Mayor. Thank you. All right, are we ready to start? Yeah. Okay. Where's the call? Are Rich? Yes. Hi. Good morning, it's Bob, o <laughs> Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and make your comment, please? <clears throat> yes, yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ann Baskerville. I'm speaking on behalf of the Sierra Club, 70 East Lake Street in Chicago. The Sierra Club asks that you vote no on agenda item 222-20. We ask that you vote no on this project until a comprehensive land use and transportation plan is completed with community input and regional consensus. We ask that this plan protects health and quality of life for all residents. Regional consensus is important because as you know, the bridge over 53 that has been discussed along with the roads leading to it are within the village of Elwood. In terms of health, one of Sierra Club's main concerns with any warehouse proposal regards air pollution from semis. Diesel particulate matter 2.5, a component of diesel exhaust, is a tiny particle that is dangerous to human health. Prolonged exposure to diesel particulate matter can increase the risk of cardiovascular, cardiopulmonary, and respiratory disease and lung cancer. Sierra Club supports efforts to reduce semi-truck traffic on 53 and therefore reduce the pollution people along 53 uh, people that live along 53 breathe. A whole bridge combined with a land use and transportation plan has the potential to reduce pollution along 53. In terms of North Point, however, even with the proposed bridge over 53, 
trucks and the pollution they generate would be increased near residential areas in Elwood. The question is, is there a better alternative? Is there a better place to zone warehouses and semis that they would generate? Last December, Centerpoint published a YouTube video showing that their Joliet development, um, in terms of warehouse space, has 10 million square feet available. Or, yeah. A public land use process can allow the public to have input on whether it is best to ensure this intermodal and other land zoned industrial reaches full capacity before zoning additional industrial land. Finally, Sierra Club volunteers have worked for decades to restore the tall grass prairie at Medewin. Medewin is a great place for outdoor recreation for all ages. Recently, I have observed more and more groups of teens and young adults taking advantage of the recreational opportunities at Medewin through running, photography, and exploring the largest open space in northeastern Illinois. Please consider the long-term impacts to Medewin in your decision. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Good morning, this is Mayor Oderker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? This is Roberto Quack with the Warehouse Workers for Justice. There is a court decision lost yesterday, but we won in the court of opinion that we don't think that this is a fair process, that this isn't as inclusive as it could be for public participation. The people without internet, the people without computers, the elderly with disabilities, we are not allowing them to participate as fully as they could, not in our opinion, and we are going to continue to fight in the court of opinion and in the court of law if we're able to get the chance. That we promise. Beyond that, this is an opportunity to do this differently, and we're not being given this opportunity. We're conducting this meeting while people are sick in our community, while people are dying, while people are sick in the warehouses, and this is the top of the priority list to consider this project. This is the moral thing to do. People want to participate in this, but they're not given the opportunity. This is going to have generational impacts, and people are bro tired of the broken promises, the promises of the warehouse jobs the promises of the infrastructure that's broken, the promises of, oh, this is going to reduce traffic. We find that hard to believe. We're not going for the okey-doke. We're not going to fall for corporate talking points developed in some office space somewhere in Kansas City or who knows where. We have our lived experiences, the experiences of warehouse workers, the experience of people dying from being hit in the community by semi-trucks. This could be an opportunity for the entire community, for the workforce, but it hasn't been. That's what needs to change. That's what's underlining this movement against North Point. And we will continue to organize. We will use every measure we can to win justice whether it's through the court system, whether it's through the media, whether it's door knocking, which we will be doing more than ever after this vote goes down. We will be watching. We will be active. We are going to make change. We are the change. And you won't be able to stop us. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Rachel Ventura, Will County Board Member, District 9. I am again asking you to listen to your constituents and vote no on this resolution. Earlier today, or yesterday, I sent you 1,270 petitions from the people opposing this project. Many of them listed their own comments on that petition. If you have not had time to read through each comment, I implore you to do so before you vote. Furthermore, you have the ability to add conditions to this resolution that require the tenants of Compass Business Park pay a minimum $15 an hour uh, as soon as they fill those jobs um, to all employees and limit the temp workers to less than 15% per company and remove the enterprise zone, foreign trade, recapture agreements, or any other tax incentives. But no member of this board has requested this because they know North Point will walk away. If you truly care about good paying jobs, this would be a must. 
That said, if you vote yes on this resolution as is, this is evidence that this council is not listening to the people's wishes. Litigation against the city will result in further debt to the city on top of the budget restraints presented by the COVID-19 crisis, the forthcoming economic crisis, and the burden both of these place on taxpayers. Local governments will see huge decreases in sales taxes and potential delays in property taxes. You should be focusing on the safety of your residents, opportunities to grow good paying jobs, and scaling back the budget to adjust for the pressing times. I would like to submit for the record that the council and mayor have ignored other taxing bodies and organizations which have already been listed up by previous callers. They have ignored the elected officials, uh, especially in delaying this meeting, such as Governor Pritzker's executive orders, Attorney General Kwame Raoul's direction on Open Meetings Act, state legislators such as Senator Pat McGuire, uh, Senator Patrick Joyce, Representative Anthony DeLuca, Representative Larry Walsh Jr., and postponing the meeting hearing and vote. Will County Executive Larry Wall Sr. has issued statements against this project that have been ignored, and this council has ignored the multiple times I have spoken out against this project, as well as the dissenting votes of Will County Board Members Herb Brooks, Don Gold, Joe Van Dyne, Amanda Cook, Julie Berkowitz, and Judy O'Gala. They have ignored the people, including the last set of petitions on the 103 acres rezoning, which comprise of 788 names, and this new one, which is over 1270. They have ignored the county studies, like the Will County Community Freight Friendly Freight Mobility Study. The presenter yesterday uh, made changes, but did not highlight which ones they did, nor did they say they were in compliance with that method of qualification. Uh, furthermore, the county is in the process of completing the transportation study for Will County, including this area, and it would be prudent to wait for these results before adding more traffic. The city ignored the project um, that will result in more trucks and more traffic, more potholes with no funding to fix them, no tax relief for residents, as this enterprise zone will discount the taxes North Point pays and thus Joliet it receives. The city has ignored the project that this project will result in an increased tax burden for residents who will have to pay the infrastructure maintenance and repairs. The city has ignored the pleas of against low-wage temp jobs. North Point won't guarantee pay for those working in the warehouses permanency or qualified jobs, and this is also result in lower taxes to the city as people won't have disposable income. You have ignored the dangerous pollution, environmental factors, and health risks. And lastly, the city has ignored the lack of property rights for the bridge to be built. I will continue to stand with my constituents in this matter, whether it is in the court system, the government meetings, or in political elections. If you cannot do your job of representing the people, then it is time that you are voted out. I'm asking you to do your job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richie, is she still on the line? She was um, did she? Did I hear right? Did she say we should demand the $15 an hour inside the warehouses? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that was already done in Springfield. That's the law, Ms. Ventura. All right, next call. <laughs> yeah, next caller in line. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning. This is Mayor Oderkirk. Uh, can you give your name, address, and comment, please? I'm Sandy Costa, Joliet resident and member of the Universalist Unitarian Church of Joliet. I'm asking you to oppose the annexation of land for the Compass Business Park. Annexing huge tracts of land to build a gigantic intermodal center mm -hmm. is not an answer to our financial woes, especially given the damage that center will do to our environment, our community safety, our infrastructure, and our job prospects. There is land already open for warehouses. <coughs> there are empty warehouses all over this area. There are warehouse jobs ready to be filled, but no guarantees of decent pay or benefits. Do we want a lot more of the same? No, Joliet should be focused on building a resilient economy based on slow, steady economic growth that benefits a diverse population. Several studies concerning this project are still out. The decision should be too. An overwhelming number of people and organizations do not want the Compass Business Park project to go forward for very valid reasons. Frustration at the council's not hearing or addressing these concerns thoroughly continues. The decision to hold this meeting during the pandemic is not at all appreciated by your constituents. You should have waited. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's Mayor Oderkirk. Can you give your name, address, and your comment, please? Hello? 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 Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Am I on? 
Yes. Thank you. My name is Andrea Baumhart, 16102 West Guy Way, Manhattan. And I want to begin by saying I believe and think, and you should admit it, you all should be absolutely ashamed of yourself for what you're doing. For even holding a meeting of this magnitude under these circumstances and demanding citizens register with the deadline of Easter Sunday. How could you? Pandemic aside, let me correct you all. This was not a holiday weekend. It was a holy weekend. And it's the holiest weekend in the year. And Mayor, you need to get it right. You're supposed to be a Catholic and you ought to know. You and the council and North Point went and aimed to make this past weekend about yourself and you aimed to take a focus on Christ and healing, which is what our community deeply needed. There are people dying out there, and that's the truth. That was the lowest of the low. But that's where the snakes start, isn't it? And you can spot those snakes by their words and their actions. That's exactly how the devil functions. They speak lies. They saw like this. They use words like park, nature trail, coexist. These are some of those favorite words used by your interim city manager. I heard them at that last meeting that I attended. Lie. Maybe you're too caught up in his sugar-coated glossy language, but make no mistake about it, you cannot convince us that this filth is good for us. Your city manager is crawling with the snakes, and that North Point director that spoke up last night basically said in his own words that the citizens are failures for saying no. The true failures in this are all of you on the council for allowing him to do that and not sending him packing at that moment. You're supposed to represent your community. Are any of you squirming in your feet yet? Does anything make you uncomfortable? Where is your conscience? How do you sleep at night? Are your eyes so fixed on that bright, shiny bag of silver that foreign gas money, probably from China, is just out to secure a stronger foothold in our country? It's raising our farmland, our environment, it's overruling our economy. Make no mistake about it. The devil's here to take, and you need to snap out of it. The soul of our community is not for sale. Say no, send North Point packing. Thank you. Good morning, this is Mayor Oderkirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? John Sheridan, President of Cunningham Neighborhood Council. I do not have to give my address by law. We recently did a survey of our membership, and one of the questions was, do you feel the city of Joliet should put a moratorium on building more houses in Joliet, including not annexing, annexing North Point 1,300 acres? The results were predictable. 85% of our membership said yes. For those of you sitting on the city council that say not many from Joliet speak out against North Point, you are out of touch with your constituents. Look around at the signs of Joliet. In addition, you must not have attended two town hall meetings in Joliet where residents spoke against North Point. So if you're looking for an excuse to justify your yes vote, please do not use the excuse Joliet doesn't oppose North Point. There has been nothing but mistruths coming from City Hall since we heard rumors about Joliet talking to North Point back in 2018. It was said to Mucker Five were meeting secretly with North Point when it was you, Mr. Mayor, issuing a letter of support for a bridge to be built on a North Point project that, that, that they desperately need. Once this was brought to the attention of the full, why wasn't this brought to the attention of full city council? This is the same time you're high behind closed doors signing a lease for naming the right to the ballpark with council approval. Then you, Mr. Mayor, and Steve Jones lied to Mayor Jane Covell with the taxpayer Joliet when you said they, you were not going to vote on the extended uh, extension agreement, uh, boundary agreement, because the city was spending 246k for a comprehensive plan. As it turns out, both were behind the scenes cutting a deal with North Point. Now you're preparing to vote on a speculation agreement. I repeat, a speculation agreement, not an annexation agreement. You were given North Point carte blanche to do what they want to do, and it's illegal. The city, to the city council, don't you see you're getting played? Why are you running over the residents of Joliet's southeast side? They are taxpayers too. Now you want everybody in Joliet to believe that the upfront deal with North Point is good for the city, or we're going to be going broke. 
The truth of the matter is it's going to cost the city of Joliet a lot extra money, and it will be years before Joliet sees the tax dollars for this project. And $1.2 million is not worth the headaches it will cause. If you are going to play the Judith role and sell the city of Joliet out for 30 pieces of silver, then you should at least admit you are selling it out for far less than the center point project. Joliet received $76.6 million from the North Point, and, and in North Point's only offered you a mere $6.6 million. Can't you see the city is getting ripped off? So in closing, I would ask there be full disclosure before each one of you vote tonight. Please disclose every dollar and or gifts your business, your trust, relatives, organizations, etc., received or will be receiving from North Point or any other of their entities. In addition, any money you receive from labor unions that might benefit from the project, and if indeed you receive financial support, then you should abstain from tonight's vote because this is a, this is a conflict of interest. You really need to let Will County complete their study and the city complete the comprehensive plan before you vote. Also, you sit up there and say that you listen to the taxpayers, what they have to say, and you vote to support them. Well, here's your opportunity to put your money where your mouth is. Please vote no for North Point. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? My name is Liz Fromer, and I deeply oppose the project you're about to vote on. I watched the video of your meeting yesterday in shock. For some of you on camera, your indifference to citizens speaking of their very real concerns was so rude. You weren't just stretching your leg. You were whispering and passing. We could hear you whispering uh, on TV and passing your phones back and forth. I was fortunate, and fortunate I was able to watch all the wonderful speakers on Monday. Great job to those speakers working so hard to figure out this absurd system on the fly and navigate the technical trouble. I could talk for hours about how terrible this project is, both for Joliet and for Will County, but I have only four minutes. That's so wrong, considering North Point's Tom George via, uh, was able to speak via video for more than 20 minutes, and he has the benefit of visuals. So let's talk about your trip to Edgerton, Kansas. Many of you gave positive reviews to area newspapers about that tour. Comparing us to Edgerton is like comparing apples with oranges. Quick history, North Point first went to Gardner, Edgerton's neighbor, and they said no. Edgerton took North Point's deal. Fast forward to present day, while Gardner, home values, and population are soaring, Edgerton is stagnant. Everyone, all you have to do is Google Edgerton, Kansas, new home construction. There was discussion at the meeting yesterday about uh, new construction of houses in Edgerton. I've been checking Zillow for months, and there's just not, there, there's no new construction. People, who wants to build a house around warehouses? The surrounding towns, 13 miles away, they're growing, but not Edgerton. And that mayor of Edgerton who posed for videos and sang the phrases of North Point, well, he received a pay raise from $1,000 to $90,000 after pushing through North Point uh, project. After the uh, Edgerton development was built, landowners and residents complained of flooding, light pollution, and warehouses, literally in their backyard. When adjacent land is devalued, North Point can then buy it for pennies on the dollar and increase their footprint. In fact, last year, North Point broke ground on another giant logistics park in Edgerton. I want to talk about how different we are geographically from Edgerton. First, those Edgerton warehouses are located close to interstate. I'm a lifetime, tax-paying, multi-generational Illinois resident, unlike North Point from Missouri. But I'm not able to share visuals during this meeting like they did yesterday. A map showing the sites in Kansas and Illinois would show that warehouses that they want to build are nowhere near interstates. In fact, their location is morally indefensible. Here's why. Wilson Creek School is less than a mile from this development. When this was first proposed, that immediately caught my attention. I actually drove those roads to see its size and was deeply concerned about the fumes our children will be breathing. And I see Councilman Coleman, you're wearing a mask during these meetings. So smart, you should be, because actually you shouldn't be meeting any of you. But uh, would you suggest a mask for those children who will be going to that school in a cloud of truck fumes 24-7? Kids have smaller lungs, they breathe faster, so they're quickly impacted by pollution. How about the teachers, residents who, who live there? Also near the footprint of Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery, which is sandwiched next to the proposed location. I checked, there's no national cemetery in Edgerton, Kansas. There are multiple uh, veteran funerals here every day. It's reprehensible that you're forcing us to conduct this meeting virtually, because I'm certain that the veterans who have shown up for those 
past meetings will be sitting right there in front of you today. We have an honor of having a national cemetery close by, and we should be fighting to provide those families with a reverent location for their loved ones. Compass Business Park would also bump up against the amazing Manawa National Telegraph Prairie. It's the largest open space in Northern Illinois, and environmental groups have been diligently working to restore the natural prairie here. Their plans for this space extend beyond our lifetime. This development would impact the native plants and animal and insect species in this area, along with countless migrations. Last but not least, is if this is about the people, the people have. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good morning, Mayor Odekirk and council members. My name is Mike Bill. I've been a resident of Will County since 1980 and a full-time residential real estate agent here since 1986. I would request that you extend the professional courtesy of listening to my call and shame on Councilman Huck this morning for referencing callers' mental health. That was unprofessional to say the least. I know that all of you have seen the data, facts, and figures proving there are no long-term benefits to Joliet. If you allow this bloated, blighted behemoth to come to town, for some reason you have chosen to refuse to extend a boundary agreement with your good neighbor and high school district partner, Elwood. You have turned deaf ears to your constituents and area residents, including union members and truck drivers who actually live in the affected area. If you all vote in favor of this project, Mayor, you and the council will be known for decades to come as the handful of people who went against the public good and made a critical decision that is detrimental to hundreds of thousands of people and an entire region to benefit two entities, the Out of Area Development Group and the Heads of Organized Labor. You know, Doc Gregory spoke last night about Joliet's approval of casinos and racetracks. I'd like to know a key point that Doc did bring up. Those projects were brought to fruition by local businessmen who had skin in the game and families and businesses in the region, unlike North Point. North Point's need to close on their land options in a timely fashion and appease their investors in order to preserve their bottom line should be the least important factor in the city of Joliet's decision. North Point made their own bet over the last decade. They bought farmland and put options on farmland in an area that has no access to interstate or rail, and then decided to force industrial zoning into a space where it is not the best and highest use. Like a petulant child turned down by one parent when Elwood said no, they've come running for permission for their poor planning and decision making from you. I saw in the video yesterday, it appears at least one councilman is tracking how many people are calling from the city of Joliet or outside. You know, if you treat this project like it only affects Joliet, it's like telling someone to swim in the non-peeing section of the public pool. It is all going to seep over on the rest of us. We're in extraordinary times here in April of 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic is changing the national dialogue about our deep reliance on overseas manufacturing and the warehousing of cheap goods and raw materials. Issues with our food and supply chains have started. Our national trading partners are turning inward to ensure their own countries are getting vital materials and food they need first, and then looking outward. I believe that North Point and their investors know the tide is shifting. Warehouses in the Chicagoland area are already sitting at record numbers of unleased, vacant, and speculative space. Center Point itself is, from my understanding, only about cash built out. Why is there this rush to develop more when the market is showing saturation and a need for less? I believe there will be increasing opportunities for American entrepreneurs to resume manufacturing and production within the state, further reducing the market for these massive storage spaces that do not bring sustainable long-term wages to area workers. Fertile productive farmland in the red basket of our country will be more valuable than ever particularly farms that are so geographically near major population centers. The bulk of this proposed footprint is farmland. Once you allow it to be plowed under, it will never be the same. In summary, mayor and council members, I would ask that you vote with your better angels and your conscience for the future of your city, your county, your friends, family, and constituents. Do the right thing and say no to North Point. Thank you so much for your time. 
Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and your comment, please? Hello? Hello, go ahead, ma'am. Hello? Um, yes, my name is Sharon, and I live in Will County. I do not have all the statistics that, of the other people. My uh, view of this has more to do with the people and the constituents in this area. The gentleman who spoke yesterday before the meeting or at the beginning of the meeting from North Point was very well spoken. You might even say he appeared to be somewhat of a con man. I don't see people taking their children to a park that is in a um, diesel infested motor park. Furthermore, North Point is not paying nearly what Center Point's paid to put their facility in. North Point does not want to pay for the police or fire department. North Point does not even want to pay for the streets that run north and south, east and west in its subdivision because residents will be driving on those roads. Well, trucks will be driving on our roads and maybe we see it that we should not be paying for those roads since trucks are on them. We already have unbelievable traffic. Even going down Briggs Street, which is quite a ways from Center Point, there are tons of trucks. If you go down Laraway on a weekday when there was not a virus and everyone's not quarantined, you will find that you can barely get across Route 53 because the trucks are stopped in the middle of the intersection from the light on Brandon Road. That is how many trucks are lined up. And that is why the young lady yesterday was complaining about how you have completely ignored the south side of the city. Also, when these trucks are coming through, we're told, oh, they're going to go on the bridge. They won't bother anyone. Well, that is ridiculous because we see that from center point, they're going through the uh, cemetery. They're everywhere. They're going down people's side streets because these people are following a GPS that is completely wrong. In Kansas City, Edgerton, Kansas, you gentlemen through and I ladies, I suppose, flew down there to check it out. And you were wined and dined by the people who own this. Consequently, you talked to people who were selected to tell you what great jobs they had. North Point, by its own admission, doesn't have anything to do with those jobs. They rent it out, someone else hires these people. No one went door to door canvassing the people who lived there to see their quality of life. So I, I just feel that you were shown what they wanted you to see. Who does not clean their house be when they are expecting company? Consequently, it would appear that you're not as concerned about the constituents as you are about the money and the statistics. Unfortunately, this is very sad because you have family that lives here. We already have loves coming to Route 80 and Briggs, which is a horrible place. The streets are narrow. The traffic is heavy. We have SDs on Laraway and 52. We are inundated with trucks. And to add this to it is just ruining, ruining the whole landscape of Will County. So hopefully, without all the statistics, you can look at what's good for your constituents and vote no for North Point. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Good morning. It's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Dr. Vince Gutierrez, Tinley Park. I'm disappointed in your actions of pushing this vote through in a time of national crisis. I am opposed to the North Point project as it stands right now. I own a business that operates out of Truckers Row and sometimes parking lot, also known as Route 53. As a business owner, these trucks hurt my business of helping people. As a doctor of physical therapy, my patients have canceled appointments because they cannot physically get to the clinic due to traffic. My patients are sometimes walking along Route 53, which is a hazard. I have addressed this previously with members of the council, but was told that this portion of the road is not Joliet, so it's someone else's problem. This is part of the issue. There are problems with the business park as it stands. One, there is no bridge. Steve and the mayor yesterday have stated that without the bridge, there will be no building permits. 
I'm not sure how versed in math you are as a council, but in order to receive the 31 cents per square foot that the city manager was fawning over, there must be buildings. Without building permits, there are no jobs. There are no supposed union jobs, although we already know that Compass Business Park has gone back on their word regarding union, jo union jobs and other markets they've taken over. There are no warehouse jobs. This is what people keep talking about. Look at the total number of jobs available. Without building permits, there are no jobs. Unless, of course, there is a plan to allow trucks to enter Compass Business Park without the bridge. Alternative means. What does this phrase, alternative means, mean? The mayor of Joliet is a lawyer, and I would hope that either he and, or Marty have defined this. Here's the problem. They haven't defined what this alternative means that was brought to the planning commission's attention, but it was never defined there either. So either the city is signing off on a project in which they are unaware of the details, which wouldn't be the first time. Some may not remember the DMG field naming rights in which the council approved the contract, which was never read, or they're aware of what this alternative method would be to enter the business market they're failing to inform the public. For those that wonder what I'm talking about, here's the summary. Compass Business Park has a written into the contract that they would have alternative means of entering the warehouse complex in the event that the bridge is not built. Would this alternative means satisfy Steve Jones and allow the council to approve building permits? This is a question of the integrity of what's been said so far during council. Also, Steve Jones won't be for the city law, so the city would have plausible deniability, as the next city manager most likely will be in favor of permits because of money at stake. Let's talk about the hypocrisy at the council right now. We know that Steve Jones will not be an active member for long. The council has set a precedent in the past this past year by waiting for a new council before voting on major issues. This is an issue that should be tabled until there is a new city manager that, that will inevitably have to deal with the mess created by Jones and the council. Now, people will disparage me by saying, you no longer live in Joliet, and I've heard that from other members saying they're not from our city. Here's my rebuttal. I own a business that operates in Joliet. I donate my money to causes within the city of Joliet. This is no different than the city welcoming a business member from outside of the city to be part of its violence task force. Apparently, the depth of pockets matter more so than the members of the community that are actually affected by the shootings in the warehouses in the city. Finally, the city has a city manager that refuses to move to the city. Why is the city allowing the recommendations of a man that thinks so little of the city that he has refused to move to the city, but then note that a majority of the opposition comes from people outside the city limits? The city has rules in place that the city manager must live within city limits, except this council isn't going to enforce it for this manager. And you wonder why I'm questioning the integrity of the council at this point in time. Bring the bridge and then bring this motion. Without the bridge, this shouldn't even be a talking point, more or less an actual vote. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Name, address, and comment, please. Good morning. My name is Tim Sharger, and I'm a professional traffic engineer with Kimley Horn, uh, a national consulting firm. I've been retained by North Point to perform a traffic impact study for Compass Business Park. This study follows state, county, and local guidelines and will be reviewed by multiple agencies to ensure conformance with their standards. I can tell you that this is by far the most robust study I've undertaken in my nearly 20 years of doing transportation studies in Illinois. The study area covers almost 33 square miles and contained over 5,000 specific intersections. It includes regionally specific data that was developed from thousands of hours of traffic counts on local roadways and analysis reviewed not just by Finley Horn, but also by the Illinois Department of Transportation six specific scenarios, each with multiple variables, have been analyzed, providing a robust review of the potential traffic conditions. Millions of dollars of roadway and intersection have been identified to help mitigate the impact of the car and truck traffic anticipated, but not just by the development itself, also as a result of continued growth across the region. The community can take great comfort in the thoroughness of this analysis and even more so in the unprecedented commitment by North Point to have this study redone every 3 million square feet. This demonstrates North Point's commitment to providing a transportation network that is safe and efficient for all roadway users. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. We have the next caller. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and make your comment, please? Joe Bershay. Go ahead, ma'am. 
Um, I work in Joliet schools, and I travel about 53 every day, along with my students and my own children who ride buses to the school. Uh, these roads are not safe. Between dodging potholes from my trucks going out of their lane, um, cars running through red lights, uh, disobeying stop signs, these are not safe roads for anyone, so let alone be any thousands of more summer trucks and employee cars to it. There are two bridges that are being discussed in this project, the Hobo Bridge, which will be controlled by Joliet, and then the Ferry Bridge on Route 53, which is not controlled by Joliet, it will be controlled by Elwood. Um, be there. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Um, Joliet should be asking about the status of the Ferry Bridge before they even take a vote on this or wait for the courts to decide what's going on with the bridge. Joliet will have no control over this bridge. I can't stress that enough. We are going in, or we are in something currently in a housing shortage, not a warehouse shortage. Those houses, you're going to get tax revenue a lot faster and more consistently from all the houses that can be built and all that land than warehouses. Where I am for you your job, uh, my concerns are not being a job that, is, that will be building buildings or that workers will be building these warehouses after. They will not be union jobs. That's where we are concerned. We need union jobs before, during, and after. And we're for growth. We're for the right growth. So when people say that you don't want this because you don't want growth, that's not true. Um, those of you who ran on a pledge of no more warehouses, please stick to your word. We're watching if we go. And then I do have one question for you. Um, how are adding more warehouses, how, I'm sorry, more warehouses to, um, how is it going to decrease the traffic on Route 53? You're adding thousands of more semis every day. They have to get from 80 to these warehouses. They're not going to not be on 53. They're traveling to these places. So please, if anyone thinks that going to decrease for our trucks, you're full. And my last thing, please don't go. My students and their future, your political future, do depend on us. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next call. Good morning. It's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good morning, board. I am Garrett Wayne, a student at Juliet Central High School. And I have to travel up and down Route 53 to get to school on a school bus. And it is scary. My classmates and teachers also travel these roads. I'm asking that you do not vote in favor of North Point. They will not do anything but bring more problems to our area. Thank you for think thinking of the future of Joliet and keeping the future safe for your students who travel to Joliet Central High School every day. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Yeah, Garrett McGuire, 24756 South Hemp Hill Drive. I'm Joliet's neighbor. I live in Hemp Hill Subdivision, where there's 65 residents sitting in limbo, wondering what you people are going to do with this North Point along Green Road and Ridge Road. Uh, people are trying to sell their houses. Nobody wants to buy them. We've talked about this before. I was a 30-year veteran of the Will County Sheriff's Department and I did a lot of work for Joliet. I also am a retired nurse and I did 32 years of military service. I've been a public servant all my life but I never expected to get this. I wish you guys would make up your mind what you're going to do with this property that's north of me because I can't sell my house. We've talked about North Point buying it. They all say we'll get back to you. Well, nobody's ever gotten back to me. So I wish you guys would make up your mind. I hope you vote though, because this is a nice, pristine area out here. A lot of good farmland's going to get ruined. And just because somebody wants to build a warehouse, and I'm telling you, <laughs> warehouses aren't going to be it because someday the warehouses are going to be empty, and what the hell are you going to do with them? So that's all I have to say. Uh, you gentlemen have a, and ladies have a fine day, and uh, I hope you do the right thing. Thank you. That's all. We have the next user. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Mary McGuire. Address is 24756 South Hemp Hill 
Drive, Elwood, Illinois, and my comments um, are, well, a few of them. I'll try and keep it real short, though. So, uh, the subdivision I live in is Ridgeview subdivision. It's Ridge Road and Manhattan Road, and there are 65 houses in this subdivision, and a lot of people have lived here 35 to 45 years, and they are getting older, and uh, they have health issues. We're talking asthma, cancer, um, bronchitis. Anyway, the health issues are going to be exacer exacerbated by the uh, North Point. There's no getting around that. There's going to be so much pollution, noise, uh, smog, um, you know, just even the light pollution during the night is going to hurt. <clears throat> also, um, I think that school kids are going to be endangered even more so than they are now with all these trucks on Route 53. They're, it's not fair to our kids. And uh, uh, the other thing is, again, property value. North Point had, had told us, oh yeah, they buy us out. Of course, they never contact us as our property values keep going down. I don't think North Point really considers the community because we are the community. My backyard is touching Joliet. Um, it's going to affect me no matter how, but please vote no because we have so much riding on this and it's about time that uh, North Point understood we don't want them and Joliet would look at the community and look at the people who it's going to affect. Um, I just think it's wrong to try and drive the older people here into a nursing home during a pandemic. I mean, this is ridiculous. We want to stay where we are and please do the right thing and vote no. Um, thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Dr. Jordan M. Legret, I would like it to go on the record that I vehemently oppose North Point development and urge you to vote no. Before I begin, I wish to state that I would appreciate your undivided attention while I speak today. Thank you. I have two very important messages I would like to convey to the board. One involves the monetary figures proposed. According to the mayor, North Point is expected at its peak to generate $1.7 million a year, which is over 12 months time in revenue for the city of Joliet. I feel compelled to point out that currently the casinos generate almost this much revenue in one month. The cost to the city of maintaining required services, such as police and fire, will likely exceed any expected profit. Furthermore, several other bodies that have hundreds of thousands or even millions to gain annually have gone on record as opposing this development. In no way, shape, or form will this development mitigate any financial hardship that the city may be facing. North Point is not the answer to your financial problems. Compass Business Park is an irresponsible, destructive, and incredibly short-sighted plan. My second reason for speaking with you is to share my experience in the city of Joliet. I am a longtime resident of New Lenox and for the last 10 years of Manhattan. Without question, the people of Manhattan do not want this project. Anyone that drives down the streets of Manhattan can easily figure this out. You already know this. However, I do not know how the residents of Joliet felt about this project. I was assured after speaking to one of the city council members that the residents were fully aware of the project and that most would support it due to the great tax benefits it would provide. So I took it upon myself to find out the truth in this matter. I knocked on many doors in Joliet. Out of the hundreds of doors that I knocked on, I am here to tell you not one single resident that I spoke to supported North Point development. Not one. That's a fact. A good fraction of residents had never even heard of the project. With that being said, Joliet City Council members, I pray you are listening right now. Please let my statement resonate. Your residents, your taxpayers, the individual that you represent, do not want this project. This decision will have an everlasting impact 
please do not abuse your power. You made a commitment to represent Joliet residents. One final note, on behalf of all healthcare providers, first responders, grocery store workers, all real essential workers, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for conducting such business during a global crisis. Perhaps current events have not resonated with you because you do not see it, live it, or experience it daily, but people are sick, scared, and dying. For those, for those of us that work in healthcare, we are on the front line. This business is selfish, irresponsible, and quite frankly, a slap in the face to all of us. Make this right once and for all. Vote no to North Point. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Yes, good morning, Mayor Odekirk and members of the City Council. This is Don Gould from Will County Board District 6. Good morning. Good morning, Don. Go ahead. I represent all of Jackson Township. Thank you. I represent District 6, which includes all of Jackson Township. It's a community of good and very caring people who I've gotten to, uh, gotten to know very closely over the years. I've long been opposed, and I would like to reiterate my opposition to North Point this morning and list several points. First, I've listened to people throughout Will County, and the message I've heard is no more trucks. It's a message that resonates throughout the county, and a project of this magnitude is to the detriment of the quality of life for all Will County citizens. I think this is a decision so important, it'll be a legacy for all of you. Secondly, in terms of economic development, I think as a city, a county, and a region, we can do much better than warehousing. The experience in communities around the county has shown that we need to attract better paying and attractive businesses that do not generate truck traffic. I have long stressed to the CED, and I've said on WJOL for years, that the importance of creating a better economy, we need to attract R&D companies, IT businesses, and data centers things that drive the economy in the 21st century. Thirdly, I agree with County Executive Larry Walsh in his March 2nd letter. He addressed the study moving Will County. Larry said that municipalities should not consider projects that would compromise the integrity of the taxpayer funded study, including mental warehousing projects. I agree with him. Lastly, you have to remember, and nobody said this, North Point actually filed with Will County they, they failed in Outwood, they, they went to Will County, they never proceeded on it, the application still sits there. They approached Manhattan, now they're coming to Joliet, and I think it, it just reminds me of the, the old Mike cereal commercial where they pass around the bowl and then they go and they, they want you to be Mikey, they want you to be that kid who's going to take that cereal bowl. Please don't be deceived by this. Vote for the kids. Vote for the grandkids, vote for a better future, and vote no. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Can you state your name, address, and make your comment, please? Good morning. My name is Carrie Cogan. I live on a Route 52 in White Feather subdivision. We moved here in 2007 to raise our family, and we moved here for a quiet hometown feel and that is being destroyed by the trucks and the traffic that come down 52 daily. I have a 16 year old son who just started driving in December. Um, I'm fear, I fear for him when he has to turn on to Route 52 with trucks that are barreling by at no less than 60 miles per hour. I see uh, police officers pulling these trucks over because they don't belong on these roads. They are down at Baker where there clearly is a sign that says there was no truck traffic allowed. I have seen them on that tiny little bridge on Baker have to back up where cars have clearly had to move off the road to let them through. My next point is that my father-in-law is buried at Abraham Lincoln Cemetery. I have watched pictures and videos of trucks destroying that property and it is disappointing and disrespectful to all those veterans that are buried there and the families that go there to show their respect. Um, my next point is home values. This will decrease my home value and the value in the surrounding area. We have just as much interest in this project as the members uh, that live in Joliet, and it will affect us. Right now we shop in Joliet, we eat in Joliet, we go to Joliet and give our money to your town. That will no longer happen if this project is approved. I implore you, the city members, to please make a good choice 
based on my children and my value of life. So I implore you to please vote no to North Point. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good morning. This is Tim Kogan. I live in Manhattan in White Feather Subdivision, right off of Route 52. I want to thank you for the opportunity to call in this morning. More importantly, I'm so proud to hear all the passionate voices standing up for what's right. I'm strongly against North Point. I do not want this, the increased traffic, especially the trucks. I do not want my health to lose its value. I want my, my, my wife and my, my wife and I have built a family here in Manhattan. We love the town and the community as well as the surrounding areas. We chose Manhattan because it was a town we knew we could establish our family and stay for a very, very, very long time. My eldest son was four when he moved to Manhattan. He's now 16. He's driving on our roads. As a parent, I'm terrified of the thought of him driving with increased truck traffic. The town I once knew is at a crossroads. It does not have to be that way. I ask you to listen to the residents in front of you. As you can tell, there is a lot of passion about how this will destroy our town. One thing I have learned over the last few weeks is how important family, friends, and our community is in our lives. We are supporting each other as we grieve the loss of what we once knew as normal. I understand business, and I understand economics, and I understand politics, but it's apparent that you have no clue how to listen to your communities. In fact, at least two of you have been doing anything but listening during these meetings. As we talk, you should be sitting still, closely listening to the passion of our community the passion they have in their voices. If you understood that, you might understand how it's going to destroy our towns. Do your job, listen to the people, work for the people, be part of the people. Vote no. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Next caller. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Hi, good morning. My name is Ben Stenemeyer. My address is 1315 Texas, Joliet Avenue. Um, I'm a member of Local 150. I'm in favor of the North Point Project because it's not often that in my line of work that we have work in our backyard where we don't have to drive hour, hour plus. And the fact that is nice, but also it's going to create jobs for more people than myself and it's going to be able to provide for families in the local area and for local businesses. So I urge you to vote yes on this North Point project. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good morning. My name is Pia Reikas. I'm against North Point. If you allow this project to go through, it will be out my front door. We've lived in our house for 34 years. We love the fresh air and the quiet of the area and the wildlife that runs through our yard. I know you won't answer me, but I want you to think about this. If you want to decimate Will County, put this huge monstrosity out your front door, not mine or anyone else that lives out here. You all can take the additional 5,000 trucks. This is what North Point quotes. And who knows how many employees' cars pass your front doors every day. North Point talks about a closed loop. We all know how that's going to work. It's not. We just don't have the infrastructure. The state is talking about putting road construction on hold because of the pandemic, according to NBC News. They talk about a riding and walking path in the industrial park. Who wants to breathe that crap? Who wants to be kept awake from the lights and the back of beats? 24-7, nobody. We've been told that we don't have a voice or vote in this matter. Nor does the Bayland or the Veterans Cemetery. We should because it's Jackson Township. We live here. You don't. We're told we spread misinformation and lies. Not one of you will tell us what those are. Mr. Hogg, 
says he has a laundry list of these, but he doesn't want to get into it. You tell us we're troublemakers. You tell us the Joliet citizens are for this. Do you even listen to them? During last night's debacle with you all laughing, walking around, and on your phone, it's apparent that you don't. How disgusting. Do you not see the signs in front yard? We should have a voice and a vote. Put this on a ballot so we can decide since this will transform Will County from a farming community to a garbage county. This will not destroy, this will not only destroy Manhattan, the Elwood, Piatone, Lennox, Joliet, but all the other surrounding towns, the Bay Women Cemetery. Our vets should be able to have a dignified final resting place without the numerous samurai turning around in a cemetery running over graves. How disrespectful is that? We've been told to just move. A lot of us have families, businesses, family farms. You're telling multi-generational farms to just move? You are selling us out for a measly $2 million. Elwood got more than that 20-some years from, ago from Centerpoint. This is not a good deal. Who's going to repair our roads? Not North Point. They've already said that. You really need to tear the pre-annexation apart and read between the lines. This is a no-win for us and a win-win for North Point. They are the ones that are lying and feeding misinformation. If you can honestly say you want 1,200 acres of warehouses and industrial pollution in your park, front yard, then vote yes. Yeah. But if you wouldn't want this in your front yard, then for the love of God in Will County, vote no. Send these carpet baggers packing. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Hi, this is Tara Shappi. I am calling because I oppose anything regarding North Point. I have the same points as every other caller last night and this morning have made. I think you guys are very clear that we have a lot of concerns about roads not being able to handle the amount of trucks, about pollution, about the cemetery being so close, vote no. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Penny Vanderheiden. So I just want to start by saying I was born and raised in Joliet. Joliet was a smaller town back then and it was a great place to grow up. I went to Joliet East High School. I learned back then, when Joliet decided to close Joliet East High School, that the east side and south sides of Joliet do not matter. <clears throat> Joliet was known back in the day as the city of stone and steel because of the production of limestone and because of the steel mills which brought in good paying jobs. The new meaning of steel, of stone and steel, I call it concrete canyons and steel containers. Not such a nice picture. So, and then you talk about keeping things in Joliet, you lost Caterpillar. You didn't fight to keep Caterpillar. You lost Silver Cross Hospital. Even the Catholic Diocese decided to move out of Joliet. So yesterday on WJOL, Scott read a letter from an organization called Strong Towns. The point that stood out to me in that letter and what that organization represents is stop betting our futures on huge, irreversible projects and start taking small, incremental steps and repeat what you learn. You claim this project will bring in millions of dollars, but how do you know that for sure? Do you have a crystal ball to see the future? That's the only way you can be sure. No one can predict the predict future. If Joliet needs more warehouses, then why hasn't Centerpoint in Joliet and Elwood continued to build and finish their areas? Why would you start another footprint before the first is complete? Centerpoint 
is not at capacity, and if it were at capacity, it could handle the projected rail that's estimated. Back when my mom was still alive, she used to tell me, when kids were small, you have small problems, and when they become big, you have big problems. Well, I've thought about her advice and what she taught me, and I found that you can actually use this for every part of your life, this theory. You got a big house, you have big problems. You have a big car, when you have problems, they're big. For towns and cities, when they're bigger, the bigger they are, the bigger the problems. Joliet needs to address the big problems they already have before they make more issues, which will lead to more problems. Um, and you planned on in talking about that. You thought that the casino was going to be the savior. The casinos are here. They're not your savior. The city's still in debt. So this will be your legacy. Do you plan to live in Joliet when you retire? And after this is built, ask yourself if Joliet is a place your kids and your grandkids will want to live and raise their families in. How many of your kids still live and work in Joliet? And Mr. Jones, why isn't, why isn't it that you don't want to live in Joliet if it's such a great city? So I urge you guys all to think about this hard and long and vote no. Thank you. Next caller. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, Hi. and comment, please? Hi, my name is Tim Hospital. I live at 753 Stacy Drive in New Lenox, not far from the budget. Um, good, evening, or good morning, Julie, City Council, men and women. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. Uh, I am a business agent for the Bricklayers Union, and I just want to address the importance of this project. Um, as we can all see because of the coronavirus, how important jobs are. This project is not only well designed to help out with the traffic, but is also a big influence on the upcoming jobs in the area for the union construction workers. I urge you to vote yes on this project, and I urge you to vote yes for union jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Good morning, this is Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? My name is uh, Matthew Stenemeyer. I live at uh, 4143 Doe Court in Joliet, Illinois. I'm a member of uh, Local 150 Operating Engineers. I would like to voice my support for uh, this proposed uh, this business park at uh, North Point. Uh, my local relies on projects like this to keep people like me employed. <clears throat> Uh, I need this girl to work to support my family. These jobs allow us to make purchases in the area to keep the economy thriving. Mr. Mayor of the City Council, I thank you for uh, allowing me to be heard. I urge you to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? I'm Jackson Township Supervisor, and um, I'd like to ask for you to vote no on this project. Um, first, I want to point out the 103 acres that was talked about in November, and many people spoke about that, saying this is just a stepping stone to get to this bigger project. It is. And um, now we're to this bigger project, however, there's still another stepping stone that needs to be um, corrected before it can go further. It's that FAA property. The, the proposal it is not contiguous. So it shouldn't even be, it, it shouldn't even get this far. If, if North Point can bring to the table that they have an option on that FAA property, but why is this even in discussion any farther? My next point is um, the bridge that is necessary. Um, it resides in the village of Elwood. It is um, been in litigation over a year between North Point and the village of Elwood. And to get from Compass Business Park 
to this bridge to be um, is the village of Elwood Road. And so what is, uh, and how are these trucks going to get there? It's, there's weight limits and things like that, and uh, that's not been thought of. I believe one of the council members said, well, that's not a problem. So it is going to be a problem. Um, I'd also like to point out there are the studies out there. The CMAP, CMAP went around to, uh, I'm sure, Joliet. They came out to Jackson Township. They went to the village of Elwood. I believe they went to Manhattan as well. They're doing a study. Why are we not waiting for an objective outside study to look at it all? Um, I just want to also with the moving will county. Um, the other item I would like to say is, um, yes, we're not no Joliet residents, but the property is in Jackson Township and we are Jackson Township residents. So we are directly affected. Um, I've w watched many, and many at many city council meetings where um, the water, Joliet water issue has been discussed regarding Fairmont and helping them with their, wa their water. They're not in the city of Joliet, but you're being a good neighbor to them. I just ask you to be a good neighbor to us. Please be a good neighbor to us. Look at all this. And then uh, lastly, I'd like to point out, this is their first proposal to you. Whatever happens to the art of negotiation? Um, you know, you, you saw this and thought it looked great or good enough. Um, but whatever happened in negotiating? It, it's very vague in many places. And back to the bridge, there's, there's another option that you are going to be responsible for if they don't get this bridge. They say that in this pre-annexation agreement. Um, and also, uh, Um, there was another point, but I forgot it, and I did write it down, so I apologize. Um, but I do ask you to vote no, reconsider, because even voting no right now, if North Point wants this, they'll renegotiate with you. You'll say, you know what, we don't like it because of the road issue. We don't like it because of the bridge issue. We don't like it until you have the FAA property. Then you negotiate that. So. That's why I'd like to leave it, and um, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate, um, I want to say thank you to my boss, Tom and Kathy Cawley, because they let me take this call during work hours. And, um, you know, I, again, just hope you vote no, and really listen to your neighbors, and be good neighbors, like you are to Fairmont, and sharing in the water. I, I really Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and make your comment, please? Hi, yes, my name is Eric Peckis. Um, I am a uh, operating engineer at Local 150. I just wanted to call in to voice my support for the project. Um, this job would practically be in my backyard. Um, I'm no more than 10, 15 minutes away. Work like this really just uh, is great for our union, great for my family, great for me. Um, I think it would be great for the uh, city of Joliet. It would be awesome for the economy in our area. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for the time, and I'll keep it nice and short. Thank you. Next call. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Hello, I'm Dan DiCaprio, a 20-year teacher resident of Manhattan, Illinois. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council and staff. We want our North Point Compass Business Park will have a major impact on the Bull County, which I feel adversely affects all the residents of Manhattan, Elwood, the townships, uh, Joliet itself, especially the residents on your south and east side. So I'm asking you up front to either vote no or postpone your vote until further study and research has been done. <clears throat> As stated last night, a caller named uh, six uh, resolutions by local boards opposing North Point, ten politicians, all local opposing North Point, 22 <coughs> different organizations, 
all coming out of the way of opposing North Point. What is the rush on this development? We spent a lot of time on the hotel development, I think about it in months, to feel the need to rush into this. I don't know if you all the board members have all the information and needed research to this project a little longer. Um, my question is basically, <laughs> I feel you need to do more homework and, uh, and, and, and study this project a little bit uh, more. Uh, my question is, if this is a closed loop, supposed to bring less traffic into the area or reduce traffic, I'd say no. 5,200 trucks daily, 10,000 cars and small trucks. We were exiting out of several different uh, entrances and exits within a closed loop. This is not a closed loop. Maybe closed with trucks going between the rail yard and the factories. You know, all the traffic that they still bring in is problematic for all of us in this area. Please wait for the Will County traffic study. <laughs> Um, the truck traffic currently today at the 80, 55, 53, 52 Briggs, Arsenal, and Manhattan interstates and roads is already at a dangerous level. Can you look at yourself in the mirror every morning after an accident from the previous day or death on any of these roads and not feel partially responsible by your vote? Compare and contrast is my second question. The initial contracts of center point, 77.6 million, versus North Point's initial contract of 6.2 million. Even last night's board member <clears throat> did not know exactly how much money was coming to Joliet versus some of the local townships and, and school systems. I think you need to spend more time on this. So what really justifies uh, this behavior? Uh, do you not care about your neighbors? As an educator and coach, would often come across a bully in the classroom or an athlete that was <coughs> narcissistic uh, putting me before team. I always wondered what justifies this behavior. Is this what you want to be perceived by your neighbors? As bullies, as narcissists, as money grabbers? None of the money in the world can justify a yes vote. Do you not care about your neighbors, Manhattan, Elwood? Townships around Joliet, once again, residents of your own town, including the south and east side of Joliet. This is on me before we. A veteran I spoke with <laughs> compares Joliet to Hitler and Nazi Germany in World War II. Uh, Joliet taking over nearby cities and townships, just like Germany run right on Europe and Russia, according to him. What justifies bad behavior? So I ask you to look at your inner self before you make a decision, all of you, each one of you individually, and ask, <coughs> Morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? My name is Rene Valdivia, Bricklayers, Local 21 Chicago, specifically precasting rectors. I just wanted to show my support for the North Point project. Uh, <clears throat> from what I read, it was a, a few year project. Um, uh, the precast community being as small as it is, uh, it would definitely provide uh, plenty of work for uh, quite a while uh, for the precast industry, let alone all the other uh, tradesmen, the iron workers, the plumbers, the electricians, so on and so forth. Um, and I think, you know, that we're building America. Um, and I would prefer to do it, you know, in union rather than non-union. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our work. Uh, we're skilled tradesmen. And uh, I've seen the results of non-union versus union and sometimes they're quite extreme sometimes they're not that far off but uh definitely the the uh, the union pride you know as it stands we have a lot of pride in what we do um and, you know we're not necessarily building cathedrals and churches on a daily basis but it doesn't matter what we build we build it with pride and we build it as so it can last, you know, for a long, long time. And 
that's uh, that's been pretty much all I got to say. Thank you. Nice Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Yes, hi. My name is Wayne. I live in Will County. Go ahead, and sir. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Hello? Yes, go ahead, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, first off, I'm adamantly opposed. I'm adamantly opposed to the North Point project and any other project that would increase truck and warehouse traffic in my county. My family and I moved to Joliet in 1955. I was 10 years old. I attended Laraway School, which had to be relocated for the safety of the students, teachers, and parents entering and leaving the school because of the hundreds of trucks lined up and down highway on Laraway Road. The school had just now recently started demolition to tear the old school down. With the current truck and uh, warehouse traffic, uh, you know, I'd be afraid to even be out and walking on Highway 53 like I used to when I was a kid. I could walk up and down the highway to Noel Park from Preston Heights without any problems, but I can't do that. I mean, nobody can do that anymore. It'd be committing suicide. And I currently uh, live off of Route 53 near, near, near Millsdale Road, and we used to be able to walk up and down Millsdale Road riding our bicycles uh, in the country. And, visiting our neighbors on the back roads and so forth. We can't do that anymore. There's so much traffic, truck traffic, and car traffic for the, uh, the people that are going to and from the warehouses. That we, you know, it's not safe to do that anymore either. Um, the other day I was in my backyard and I counted 100 trucks on Millsdale Road. And there wasn't a single patrol car in the area. And this road has been posted for a couple of years now for uh, not to be any truck traffic on this road. And, you know, the, the warehouses that are being built, uh, you know, from, from experience, I have grandchildren that have tried to work in these warehouses. After their 90 days uh, probationary periods are up, they usually let go because they don't want to uh, put them on permanent salary. And it's just, you know, things like that that I'm adamantly opposed to this project. And furthermore, uh, the uh, if uh, you know if this project does get a yes vote from the from the city council, that shows me that uh, as individuals on the board, that you should be all responsible for every accident, all loss of life, equity, and home values that have already decreased, and other negative things that might come forth. Not to mention a meeting with the current health crisis the way it is, not allowing people to see you face to face and you see the people's faces that are talking to you is, uh, is not the way that things should be done. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Oderker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Yeah, my name is Kevin Frommer. Uh, the arguments against Compass Business Park were already compelling from a factual, financial, and common sense perspective. Why would you build a development this size so far from rail and expressway access to Center Point, already down the road, with 12 million square feet open and ready for any future increase in containers, and the Center Point CEO openly asking to accommodate it? But this new normal makes the argument even more compelling. Economists are calling for a substantial financial downturn as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, that somehow couldn't even hold this optional meeting off for a couple of months. There will be an enormous impact on demand for a long time, making it almost certain that any increase in rail containers in this area will either not happen or not happen for a very long time. And when it does, center point will be right there with their 12 million square feet, right next to the rail, right by the expressway, not many more miles away, sandwiched between the treasured National Cemetery, historic Route 66, and the day one. One of only two national parks in the Midwest, the plans to be when fully restored in 15 years or so, the Yellowstone of the Midwest with incredible potential tourist draw. On top of that, do you really think that America's thirst for an endless flow of goods produced in China is going to continue unabated as it was before COVID-19? Of course not. Having said that, I would also like to point out a few things. We have watched and heard that is when the audio isn't glitching and the web feed isn't working, 
you keeping tabs on Joliet callers versus non-Joliet callers. And I'm sure we can all look forward to you smugly announcing the to totals at the end of these shameful proceedings. But do you know who else isn't from Joliet? Bobby Rush, Dick Durbin, Adam Kinzinger, Robin Kelly, and all those representatives from North, North Point who are all given the benefit of appearing by live video. The mayor and other supporters of this project are comfortable giving credence to outsiders from the area, from this area, when it serves to prop up their inexplicable and unrelenting drive to approve this project. Yet equally ready to attack non-Joliet residents for exercising their constitutional First Amendment rights to cry foul about a project that is being forced upon their homes, their lives, their communities. No, you, the city of Joliet and North Point are the outsiders. You are the encroachers. Some final points. This meeting, through multiple audio dropouts, video glitches, and feed drops, is currently in blatant violation of the Open Meeting Act, even under your misinterpretation of the governor's order. You should be ashamed of yourselves, but your behavior during this meeting shows humility is in short supply in Joliet City Government. Thank you. Thank you. Next Morning, it's Mayor Oderkirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Hi, my name is Joseph Roth. I live at 1419 West Acres Road, Joliet. Uh, my wife and I have lived in Joliet uh, over 30 years. I am asking the City Council to vote no on Resolution 222-20, the pre-annexation agreement for the proposed Compass uh, Business Park. I will say that I have submitted the email in writing uh, comments and questions. Uh, the bulk of those comments and questions were actually forwarded on March 16th and it was forwarded to uh, uh, the mayor and several um, city council members. Um, they had not received outside of thanks for comments. Uh, no response to the questions and comments from March 16th or, or, or from, from the weekend. Those are comments about water supply, city service costs, long term, uh, et cetera. And just, you know, uh, on the waterfront, I did check the Rethink Water website this morning and earlier this week to see if there was any updates. Uh, where that process is at, how it affects Compass, and there's nothing, looks like there's really nothing been added to that website in 2020. Uh, beyond writing down, to summarize quickly my main reasons for opposing uh, North Point at this time, is certainly until the city has confirmed a new water supply, the cost, all details, I don't think it's wise for the city to do a significant annexation of this type, let alone knowing also, the impact of the well that's in the pre annexation agreement, not just for the city's water supply, but what impact it will have to the villages of Bellwood, Manhattan, and private landowners. Um, I'm also concerned uh, in about the long term cost. Will this development pay for itself as far as road impacts, city services, city vehicles? I have a severe doubt that it's going to happen. Um, you know, all the warehouses that have occurred and we have more uh, uh, gas taxes have gone up. So at some point, all the warehouses, I doubt, are really ultimately paying for themselves. I also don't think this pre annexation consideration should go through until the city is well into the path plan update and you have an idea of what the citizens of Joliet see their future being and what their future to be. On the transportation front, I think if Compass is approved, I mean, as soon as it is rebuilt in, a, in five, six, it, it's going to be overwhelmed. There's going to be no improvement in safety or traffic flow because of the influx of massive amount of significant amounts of new trucks. Also, in the intervening time, uh, how do we account for construction traffic and building out North Point and the workers that are going to go? Roads that are they, are they going to be on? Furthermore, transport, I don't think I should, you should not be consideration the pre-annexation until the whole bulk road bridge is not only has agreements in place with the city, but contracts. It's actually being built. We have certainty that outfit is really, really going to get um, built. I'd also like more information at city on the process the city will have for selecting the alternative for the interior route if the Route 53 bridge uh, does not occur. Uh, the alternate is mentioned in the pre-annexation agreement, but there's no definition of what that process will be, if it will be a public process, etc. And I think that, that needs to be out in the open and 
and and uh, and no, um, I am disappointed in the way the process of the city council was handling this. The short notice on this meeting, but I've got to do that. I've got to do my best, but I don't like the manner in which the rush manner in which this has been happening. Uh, the last thing I want to say is, if I said, you know, this is approved, which hopefully it's not. Uh, I would ask the city to make a concerted effort to demand a more active corporate city. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Sure. Good morning. My name is Howard Green. I live in Chicago. Um, I'm one of the owners of Meridian Design Build. We're a small Rosemont-based construction firm that has done a significant amount of work in Will County uh, over the last 15 years, including uh, some projects in Joliet, including uh, the new FedEx freight terminal um, and Johnstone Supply. Uh, our company employs 35 people, and we're a member of the Joliet uh, Region Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm calling this morning to speak in support of the Compass Business Park project. Um, our company um, is in a unique position. We were fortunate enough to be selected to build North Point's first building in the city of Chicago uh, that we're currently uh, close to wrapping up for them. Um, my personal experience uh, with North Point is that they are honest, forthright people. They do what they say they'll do, and they've lived up to their commitments. Um, North Point's first building in Chicago, uh, as, as many of you are aware, uh, was fully leased prior to its completion, and we had an opportunity to submit bids for two more buildings that they're planning to build uh, over the next year there uh, last Friday. That totals about 880,000 square feet of additional uh, investment in Chicago. Um, this is happening during a time I mean, we're seeing many of the national developers that we work with putting plans for similar projects on hold and, and reconsidering investments they're making in other communities. Um, evidence of North Point's commitment to investing locally, to me, are shown by the fact that the people we deal with at North Point are all local people. Um, they're local engineers, architects that North Point has hired uh, to lead their efforts here in Illinois, and they're some of the most experienced and well-respected people I know in the industry. Um, the project that's being proposed here, uh, I feel, represents a responsible approach to the development of this parcel uh, with an eye towards benefiting the community. Um, the project uh, uh, will bring, bring both union construction jobs in the short term uh, and in the long term permanent jobs to the area. And I commend the, the Planning Commission and the City Council for your efforts to work with North Point um, to establish a plan that, that uh, takes all that into account. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to voice my support for the project. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good morning. Uh, this is uh, John Keegan. I live uh, south of the project area. I am a, uh, against the Compass Business Park, and uh, I think it will be um, the destruction of Will County. This, uh, this project is going to affect uh, uh, funerals at the Abraham Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. It's, uh, it's going to be a detriment to uh, Medewin, uh, Tallgrass Prairie. It's going to uh, hurt the community. It's going to destroy home values. It's going to kill Elwood in Manhattan. It's, uh, it's not going to bring Joliet what they hope it's going to bring. You don't have that bridge. You don't have continuity. You're going to open the city up to lawsuits, and you're going to waste taxpayer money on endless litigation with this project. If North Point has an issue where they're going to lose land or lose options at the end of the month, that's their problem, not yours. Do not vote for Compass Business Park. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and make your comment, please? Um, good morning. My name is uh, Terry Pappish. Uh, we've lived in Elwood for two to, uh, 32 years. My husband grew up in Joliet, and I grew up in Manhattan. So we've been a part of all three communities um, for our entire lives. 
Um, we're union family members, uh, iron workers and laborers. Um, we vehemently oppose North Point Compass Business Park or Eastgate Logistics or uh, North Point, whatever you want to call it. Um, they will surround our parents' house on Ridge. Um, they're in their 80s and we have no idea where they would go and what we would do. Um, they would literally be on top of our house um, because we own a property that is right alongside what they now uh, say they own, which they said they didn't own uh, two months ago. Um, I'm allergic to diesel exhaust fumes. Um, I don't even know if I would be able to stay in my own home, and I know my parents would not be able to stay in theirs. Um, the pre-annexation agreement comes with no plans. So they can do anything that they want to because there is no blueprint or layout um, of what they're going to do. There's no such thing as a closed loop. The goods can come off of the uh, train over this imaginary bridge um, and then that would be closed, but what happens when the goods need to move further across the country? So it is going to affect truck traffic. There's no way it's not. Um, their warehouses are already um, not even filled. Uh, the 103 acres that we were told had nothing to do with any additional plans um, now all of a sudden has something to do with additional plans. The pollution alone to this area will devastate uh, the entire region. Um, the pandemic, pandemic allows no face-to-face interaction with this board and I don't understand why is it a rush. Um, you are here to serve the people and we the people do not want the entire county destroyed because of one company's interest in their own bottom line. This isn't North Point, this is Joliet. Joliet should make their own decisions when the time is right and when possibly manufacturing jobs are coming back to the United States. We have an opportunity of a huge land mass that is open. If it's not going to be used for farming, it needs to be used for manufacturing or something more productive than additional warehouses that we no longer need. Please, please vote no to North Point. Um, the anguish that you're putting these communities through is unbelievable, and we just can't do it. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and uh, comment, please? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you, can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good evening, I'm Nathan Brazoon. I moved to Will County eight years ago to pursue better opportunities and to start family after I began working for the Sheriff's Office. We moved here because of the school, the small town atmosphere, and the great residents. The time we've lived here, we have made our house a home. Here are, it is our children's hometown and the only home they've ever known. We do not want to leave. We talk to this project by center is here for children. I'm concerned about the fact that everyone else is showing you here today. My wife wants to have a long bit of time to get to work. Every day she counts her blessings that she made it at home. This is due to the condition of the road, the traffic congestion, and a large amount of semi tractor trailers already on the roadway. If this project is approved, the drive to work will be that much more dangerous. This was in the last two years she was involved in two separate accidents where she was hit by the other motors. A lot of people are talking about all the demise this project will add to the road. You can talk about it a closed loop all you want, but at the end of the day, those extra trucks will be driving home on the same road we are. What I'm more concerned about, however, is the amount of employee traffic this project will bring. Employees will be coming from low income areas outside of Will County, such as the South Side of Chicago, to work in temporary jobs. I know firsthand what type of employees this project will attract. I mean, in a unique position to be able to speak to you today about my experiences as a deputy, I'm going to no longer work there. I worked there for seven years before taking a job elsewhere, and no, I did not get forced to leave or quit under questionable circumstances. 
As a deputy for 12 areas around the warehouse in Duval County, including in Zoya, over the years I've seen prime farm ground turned into slabs of concrete. I urge you to look at your police and fire calls for service in and around your current warehouses, along with any self-initiated activity in the vicinity. During Elwood's meeting, I spoke about the large increase calls for service generated by the warehouses. I am confident you'll, be, you'll find an exponential increase in numbers around the warehouses in your city as well. As a deputy, I work for many chefs control details at the Amazon Warehouse in Moines. Deputies arrested warehouse employees for domestic battery, issue traffic citations, and there was at least one instance where someone was run over by a vehicle in the parking lot. I cannot count how many times I was driving traffic when I came very close to getting hit by cars driving recklessly while leaving these warehouses. These employees were speeding out of the parking lots and down the road just to get on to I-57 and head north. Several of the vehicles that attempted to stop led for me to high risk. I was in full police to perform the Mark Police Park at Nearset Emergency Vice Accident. I've never seen such dismay as a business at the Zoya Warehouse where they too have officers shutting down traffic on the highway so the employees can leave quicker. The local residents are actually the ones who are being inconvenienced as they have to wait while officers get employees preferential treatment while they leave the work. I mean, it was the sort of southwest area of Will County. It seemed like every time I had to be in the Elwood area, along with Alpha degree during a warehouse death chain, I would make contact with some type of criminal element. I stopped employees leaving center point while they were drag racing, driving recklessly, and speeding excessively. One time they made a stop in a vehicle with three employees that had just left center point. One of the employees provided me with a false name because he had a valid warrant for arrest. Another day I observed a car going 90 miles an hour down Manhattan Road and then 106 miles an hour down Rocky Street towards Elwood. This way, what gets the car stopped as it turned into Elwood. The first thing the driver said to me as I walked up to the car was he was late to work at this point. He said he left home late from Chicago. I also learned that he was on parole, which means he had refunded in early term prison. While serving order protections, I would frequent the warehouse to serve the response to copies. Also, while interviewing many suspects over the years, the frequent statement I would hear was the fact that many of them worked at local warehouses. In the last eight years alone, there have been at least Three Illinois State Troopers have been struck and killed by semi tractor trailers. Not to mention how many other motors have lost their lives in the same tractor way. I went to the family of one of these troopers that were killed. He was a great man and such, had such a bright future ahead of him. His wife and young kids' lives are forever. How many innocent lives have to be lost before we could stop this madness? You have to vote for this project. I'm afraid you will have blood on your Thank you for your time and please vote for people. Next caller. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you state your name, address, and make your comment, please? Mike Peterson, a long-time resident of Will County. Um, we will start today by looking at the economy. Over 16 million people out of work over the last two weeks. $4.8 trillion in deficit. Warehouses are not the answer. Minimum wage, no insurance, part time. This is no way back. Elder Kirk, you were wrong about minimum wage. It is now 9.25 in Illinois. It will not be 15 until 2025. The one thing that we do have and must keep is our farmland. God is not making more farmland. What county has some of the best farmland in the Midwest? Once plowed under, it is for good. Our number one export is corn, wheat, and soybean. So we need to keep control of our land. That land is now feeding a lot of people. Look at the food lines in the U.S. Not seen since the Great Depression. Who are the investors in North Point? No one knows. Cactus Robinson said that it would be Chinese goods. If we give up control of our land, the Chinese will come out of this COVID-19 with the world's largest economy. We may have won the Cold War, but we're losing the battle. We, we would not sell our land to Russia. Trump might. In a meeting in Elwood, North Point told us that our house values would not go down. He pointed at Shorewood and said, look, their prices have gone up. The man didn't even have a valid license. That is who you're dealing with. 
North Point is not to be trusted. North Point has become a big monster. You know that they will go east into Manhattan after seven years. And what's going to stop them from putting a bridge over 52? You are tying yourself to a monstrosity that will bring nothing but more and more lawsuits against Joliet. Centerpoint promised Elwood a lot of things, hotels, restaurants, and came through with none of them. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Do you want to have her call in again? Can we, um, Good morning, this is Mayor Odekirk. Can you make, give your name, address, and comment, please? Good morning, my name is Sarah Martin, and after watching last night and reading the article this morning, I'm frustrated. For the record, I am against this project. I have also attended every meeting in Joliet, Manhattan, and Elwood, and the Get to Know Us meetings given by North Point since they came here in 2017. No amount of cotton candy and very closed loops is going to make this nice. It's all just a fantasy. Center Point is a closed loop system, and obviously that is not working. Then they said last night that there are 59 points of entry. How is that closed loop going to look now? Number one, North Point stated in October they wanted 103 acres for much needed warehousing jobs, and that the 103 acres had nothing to do with this project. Last night, we found out that was a lie. But they did say last night that if you vote yes to this, then they will purchase that land and include it in this project. And then people wonder why we don't trust them. The list of groups, organizations, schools, and individuals was incredibly long. And this was such a great project. Why are so many groups against it? If you need to ask yourself that, I went to Walmart on Jefferson on March 4th and asked 50 random people, hey, do you guys know anything about this North Point thing? Four people said yes. 46 said no. And when I asked them if they lived in Joliet, all but one said that they did, in fact, live in Joliet. So you have to wonder how many Joliet residents actually know about this project. I implore you to listen to the east and south side of Joliet. The west and north side probably won't be that impacted. I went to the meeting on the southeast side, and after listening to their horror stories of truck, tra truck traffic, ruined roads, and how they fear for their kids' lives, I truly can't see how any of you could vote for this. They feel we have left them in the dust and think you think this area is trash. While at the meeting, they counted 35 trucks in three minutes that passed that sports center where much of their youth go to play. That is insane to me. The contract is on the website, and I implore you all to actually read it. I encourage you to read it. If you, re if you sign this, you will give up any and all control of that land. They can make any changes without the board's input. North Point also said they could not guarantee how many jobs there actually will be or who the companies will hire once they rent or sell the space. Their words at their Get to Know Us meeting. Also this morning, S&P Global wrote an article that automation in warehouses is on the rise during this pandemic. So how many jobs will it actually be? There were quite a few people from Jackson Township, Manhattan, and Elwood that spoke because you are building on their land. Yes, it is incorporated, but they are the ones that will be impacted. You can dismiss them since they aren't your tax base, but when it's their kids breathing in diesel particles, drinking contaminated water, you bet they're going to be mad when another city wants to land grab and destroy their way of life. Please remember that you represent the south and east side of Joliet, not just the west side and north side. I want to thank Becky Gavin and Jen Crowman for coming to the South and East Press release in Joliet. 
Lastly, I want to let you know that we can hear you. Your mics are very loud, even when you whisper. We heard you say, cut her off yesterday when a woman was talking about the no construction in Edgerton. And then she was cut off before the buzzer. We can hear you snicker. I heard you snickering earlier. About what we don't know, I'm not sure because we can't see the notes that are being passed back and forth. We saw you leave for long periods of time and we caught HUD leaning back with his eyes closed. The judge's, the judge's word said he used the word shady and that is the word that comes to mind regarding this whole fiasco. I implore you to vote no to North Point and think of your Joliet East and South Side. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have the previous caller back up? I do not. I'll check on it. Okay, put the next one through. Next call. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you state your name, address, and comment, please? Uh, my name is Erin Ward, and I live in the subdivision of Salem Acres in Wilmington, Illinois. First, I'd just like to say um, thank you for letting me speak today. I'm speaking to you today because I strongly oppose the 2600 acre North Point Compass Business Park development. Just to give you some background information about me, I'm a mother, a wife, a daughter, a sister, I am an educator, and I am a first responder. I am a lifelong resident of Will County. I'm a product of Joliet Township High School, Joliet Junior College, and a graduate of the University of St. Francis with a degree in environmental science. I can speak to you all day about the negative environmental impacts that this project will have on our county, but you already heard that. So instead, I'd like to speak to you as a volunteer first responder. Unlike many, I have seen firsthand the devastation that has come to our communities because of an infrastructure that can't handle the traffic we already have. I've worked traffic control numerous times for emergency railroad repair, minor accidents with injuries, and the worst situations traffic accidents with fatalities. Last year alone, I testified that Wilmington had two fatal accidents, which is two accidents too many. My heart breaks for all those involved and all their families. Working traffic detail during these times is dangerous. It's stressful, people are confused, they're trying to figure out alternative routes. I mean, how much high visibility we wear, people don't see us. They almost hit us, but that's our job. We signed up for it. We signed up for a job that keeps people in our community safe. We put our lives at risk to keep people safe and to get them diverted as quickly as possible from hazards. When one day we were rerouting traffic last year for nine hours off of I-55 to the city of Wilmington on the first Kansas City Summer Festival, Catfish Day. This is one of the worst accidents I've ever worked and it was one of the worst accidents I've ever seen. Eight local agencies were needed for response. Lives were changed forever that day and those families are forever in my prayer. Driving down I-55 and I-80 at any time of day shows a substantial increase in vehicles. We all know that growth brings people, and we've had a lot of growth. But what we haven't had is new infrastructure development and infrastructure repairs. And those that we have had are crumbling at record time. I believe it's irresponsible to think about bringing a project of this size to our area without first looking at that traffic study that's currently underway. Without a strong plan for new infrastructure, including widening I-55, I-80, and Rock History, we will continue to see these patterns of accidents. We will continue to put our residents at risk, our first responders at risk, a risk that is not necessary. Any development of this size will bring substantial amounts of vehicles to our region. Our infrastructure cannot handle it. There are only two ways to access intermodal properties. The proposed bridge is a fine idea, but in order to access that bridge, you have to get into the intermodal using one of two routes. Our arteries, I-55 and I-80, cannot handle what we already have, let alone more. The increase of traffic will only increase the number of accidents. We want everybody in Will County to be safe. Our residents, those traveling through our city on the crossroads of America, and those who are working in the area, including truck drivers and employees. While this plan may seem like a good deal, now is not the time. I urge you to consider looking at infrastructure development before growth. It is all of our job to keep our residents and visitors safe. You can make a difference. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hello, if you would please state your name, your address, and uh, deliver your comments. Hi, this is Dana Doberman. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, yes we can. Hello? Okay, thank you. Um, 
Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to call again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to voice my strong opposition to know your point and the compass park development. If this project were within a mile or even five miles of your home in your child's school, would you even be considering it? It's a shame that you are making decisions that will most adversely affect residents outside of your community. It is also that the southeast portion of Joliet and its residents are of little importance to you. I think the development will destroy the quality of life in addition to the property values. I encourage you to think about the people who do this and the devastation this will bring. How will those who live in Manhattan, Elwood, and Southern Joliet maintain their property values, let alone gain any additional value? It would be within less than a mile of an elementary school and within two miles of another elementary school and a junior high. Not to mention the congestion and traffic keeping ambulances, police, and fire trucks from getting the residents who need help. Surely these lives will be lost. It has been stated by the mayor that no one will be responsible for all the infrastructure that they have caused. Right, so there's not the responsibility of the expressways and all of the other counties that cannot even handle the current traffic. This is good for all the continued deterioration. Even if the bottom of the door bill, the cars and trucks won't be teleported onto it and they won't use it. And even if they did, the vehicles and semis will still be flooding the roads to get to this bridge. How many more rolled over semis do we need to see our expressways to see the mountain subways? And how many more fatal accidents? Good morning, it's Mayor Owner Kirky. Your name, address, and comment, please. Good morning. Um, my name is Jack Darren. I'm the director of the Sierra Club of Illinois chapter, representing over 30,000 members and supporters in Illinois, including over 600 who live in the city of Joliet. And I just wanted to add a couple thoughts to those from my colleague, Ann Baskerville, who spoke earlier this morning. First, I want to be clear that the Sierra Club is not against jobs and economic development in this region. In fact, we worked with then Congressman George Stengmeister as part of the Joliet Arsenal Citizens Planning Commission on the compromise plan that called for 3,000 acres of commercial development in the area. And as a result of that agreement, we've seen 
the development of the logistics facilities we have today on those acres and the transportation infrastructure to support it. The problem with the site in question is it's hearing is that it doesn't have anywhere near the transportation infrastructure to support it, which is confirmed by the multiple uncertain and expensive contingencies in North Point's proposal. We're very concerned that the project would overwhelm local roads, which are, as we've heard, are already suffering from truck traffic with thousands of additional trucks, which would further jeopardize the safety and the access for area residents and visitors to the Veterans Cemetery and the Medellin. It would also pave over 3,000 acres immediately north of the prairie, obliterate the local stream, and cause polluted runoff into Jackson Creek. After more than two decades of work by volunteers and government agencies, the Medellin is finally blossoming as a major asset to the entire region. And we urge the city to plan for a future that invests not on its fringe, but in its neighborhoods and downtown, and is connected to the Medellin by a safe Route 53 corridor with transit and bike facilities rather than truck traffic. In that future, Joliet can be the gateway to a regional attraction for decades to come and encourage logistics developments on sites with the infrastructure to handle it. And realizing that that future can start today by rejecting this pre annexation agreement. But thanks for the opportunity and be well, everyone. Thank you. Uh, good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Hi, my name is Rob Bogner. I'm from Manhattan. I'm calling in today to voice my total opposition to this outrageous project. But first off, I'd like to start off by noting that Senator Patrick Joyce and Representative Anthony DeLuca both urged Joliet to postpone this meeting, but for some reason, you guys still feel the need to have this meeting during the time of a global pandemic. Is it because Joliet so poorly ran, or is it because Joliet and local government are running out of money and will do anything for a buck? Is it because the local government officials and union leaders are getting their pockets lined, hence the rapid push to get this approved? After listening to the presentation from North Point, how is it a few of the Joliet officials do not have any questions? You're representing the people, and you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. Along with every everyone else at the meeting, snickering, whispering, getting up, while, we're, while, while we are saying our piece during our call-ins, you're on a live stream. Wake up, guys. With the Elwood and Imoto being one of the largest inland ports in the world, why do you think it's a good idea to build another one just like it virtually across the street with minimal revenue generation? As to what was recently reported for the tax benefits, years ago when off-track betting came to Crest with Illinois, local government ended up giving all their residents a tax credit on their property taxes. If a little off-track betting location can do that, why can't North Point put more money into, into our local economy? Now, I'm not looking for my taxes to be paid, but North Point definitely needs to step up um, if, if you guys approve this monstrosity. More money needs to be allocated to local school districts, police departments, fire departments, hospitals, and a lot more towards the local and state infrastructure. The local and state infrastructure cannot handle the increased amount of traffic in this area. We have the I-80 bridge west of 53 that's about to fall into the water, potholes all over Will County that make you drive like you're playing a game of dodgeball. I-55, unfortunately, has frequent fatal accidents, as done me. A project that this magnitude needs to be planned out better, and a good start would be by not having meetings during the global pandemic. Has the county even finished their traffic study and assessment yet, or are you guys going off the magical unicorn report that North Point's given you? I do believe in growth, forward thinking, and a planned business model. This is definitely not the growth we need, nor does anyone have a clear business model. The only thing that keeps on coming up is what North Point says it will do, and then when given a chance, they'll retract or change their statements. It has been a, a dog and pony show from the start. If it was so beneficial, why didn't Elwood approve this a couple years ago? Why does Joliet think it'll be any different this time around? As elected officials, you all need to listen and pay attention to your community members, not just each other as board members and the smoke and mirrors spewed from North Point. What will it take for you to vote no for North Point? A direct result of ignorance like a family member getting run over by a truck, a family or friend getting some sort of cancer due to poor air quality, family, friends, or relatives losing equity in their homes due to this monstrosity, tire tracks over one of your loved one's graves in the Abraham National Cemetery. I'm sure you, if you look deeper in your own pockets and talk with your family and friends, some of you will not be directly affected by this. 
So I'm ver I am urging you to vote no to North Point. I do have a lot more to say, but I believe I'm going to get cut off. So again, I urge you guys to vote no to North Point. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you state your name, address, and make your comment, please? Good morning, Dr. Keisha Mahasso, 14303 Park Avenue, Harvey, Illinois, 60426, and I live in the county of Cook. I am um, here to speak on behalf of the, um, the South Suburban Regional Chamber of Commerce, um, Black Chamber of Commerce, and I had the opportunity to go to Kansas City, uh, while Kansas City is not a um, the same as the location that's going to be in Joliet. My position was making sure that the community benefits plan was a stable plan and seen it for myself. And I can honestly say after going that there should be support towards this project. Um, we had an opportunity to see North Point working in conjunction with the local farmers, literally having farms directly across the street separated only by a stream, seeing actual live um, cattle outside and actually interacting on the opposite side seeing people live in homes that are brand new um, homes seeing the community being built up where medical centers are moving into the area because they recognize the economic power of having such large companies in the area so you see the growth of restaurants um, we saw clinics uh, new gas stations things of that nature so it really does go beyond um, looking at the, the, the bigger picture of everyone to kind of narrow in on what the exact community benefits would be. I think that maybe the citizens of Joliet would have a different picture if they could see <clears throat> exactly how they will benefit with the tax infrastructure, with the dollars that are going into the school. We had the opportunity to get expansion of a high school in the area. So there is, I, I understand the passion of the citizens, I don't think that some of the information is being conveyed properly and they're getting the full picture of what the community does stand to benefit. I also asked specifically about the employment rate, um, having living wage jobs starting at $18 and up per hour, having the opportunity to speak with employers, employees that were there. <clears throat> I also asked about specifically recidivism rate, how many people are actually leaving the job, what are the numbers looking like, the numbers are very, very low, the majority of the people that were leaving the job are moving into other warehouses and moving up through the company, so there's an opportunity not just for jobs, but opportunity for long-term careers, and that's what you want in your community. The other thing that I found that was great as far as community benefits plan perspective is that these are people that are coming in with little to no skill set and they're able to have long-term careers. That's the benefit. There's also uh, opportunity for re-entry. So Joliet has a population of people that are um, have ex-offenders or have challenging backgrounds. There, there was support for that and we actually had an opportunity to speak with one of those individuals and see how that path had gone. So I think there needs to be a little bit of a broader project on just the community benefits plan and then maybe because the issue of roads and um, congestion and small none of that existed where we went so again i just encourage the council and encourage the citizens to give it a broader view and develop a community benefits plan that is consistent and that those citizens that have these concerns they can see it in writing i don't think your concern is a matter of them not being opposed, being completely opposed to the project, but it feels like smoke and mirrors, and if you put it in writing with the community benefits plan and it's shaped, then the council is protected and so are the citizens, because the job is the protection of your city. So bringing in economic development is going to be huge, and North Point will definitely bring in what you're looking for. So I wholeheartedly support it, and I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you state your name, address, and make your comment, please? Sure, this is Amanda Fade, and my address is 25349 Faraday Road. First, I would like to thank the board for listening to our comments regarding the development of Compass Business Park. I would like to start by saying that rushing this pre annexation vote through in the middle of a pandemic is irresponsible and, frankly, seems suspicious. I've also been listening, and it seems like a lot of the support is coming from outside of Will County. Most residents here in Will County 
are not looking forward to this development. I have lived in the Manhattan area for 19 years. I've been a very active member of many of our community groups, including Girl Scouts, Women's Club, and School District PTL, and several more. As a mom of two girls, I worry about my children, who will be new drivers soon, because I've already seen many lost trucks wandering through Manhattan. They are getting stuck on residential streets and disregarding all street signage. And this is before Center Point is fully built. Not to mention the traffic that will be added if North Point is built. North Point claims they will pre be creating jobs, but they are jobs no one wants. A quick Google search shows plenty of open warehouse jobs at Joliet and Will County. Vacant warehouses are in abundance, located in much better locations. So why the need for more empty warehouse space? Because that's what Compass Business Park is offering. They have no signed renters lined up. All of the fancy businesses they mentioned in their statement are not signed contracts. I can honestly say that I hardly ever go to Julia anymore because the routes to get there are difficult. Lined with potholes and the bridges that do not work or are very poor functioning, like the bridge over 80, that Joliet's mayor has himself warned people about. I don't like to put myself at risk when it's not needed, and when there are other communities I can go shopping, I will choose them. I could, sorry, I'm so very nervous here. Um, I could still drive to Joliet, but it would take me a good 20 minutes or more out of my way to get to the, the stores that you offer. I do urge you to please slow down and listen to the constituents and the voices of the surrounding communities and say no to North Point. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning, it's, it's Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and, and state your comment, please? Good morning. Uh, this is Matt Robbins, and I'm a Jackson Township trustee. Before this project is to be voted on, there are some areas that are open to interpretation and some things that, that are not even addressed. I've heard time and time again that North Point wants to be a good neighbor. Then why are they yet to talk to Jackson Township about this project that they are presenting to Joliet? This project will be solely in Jackson Township, and we have a monthly meeting with Compass Business Park on the agenda, but yet they have never come to a meeting to address us. I've heard it. Why haven't you reached out to them? Why would I? I didn't ask them to come here. You would think out of respect and wanting to be a good neighbor, they would at least address the township that they would be in, that they want to be in. The township has always received a letter for property that is being considered up for annexation. I just received one for three acres on Brandon Road. For 1,260 acres, we received nothing. No letters were ever received about this annexation to the township. And by what Kendall Jackson informed me, they are following the letter of the law and didn't have to inform us. I ask you, is this being a good neighbor? North Point says they have no plan B if the bridge isn't built. I've heard from council members, no bridge, no building permits, but in the agreement it states if there is no bridge, the city will have to work with them for an alternate route, or as I see it, the city will be liable to come up with a new plan. North Point and Elwood are still in court over said bridge. Why wouldn't you wait until this is decided before moving forward? Because again, no bridge, no building. Or is there something we aren't being told? It seems fishy. I want to make sure everyone understands if Joliet doesn't do it, no one can. Elwood doesn't want it. Man Manhattan doesn't want the contiguity. Wilmington has no, has the day one in the cemetery between them to the south. And Shanahan, Shanahan has center point and the arsenal between them to the east. Joliet, you hold all the cards for this. No one else does, and you can stop it by saying no. The biggest question I have is how is North Point going to get to the bridge when according to their plans, they will need to use 1.5 miles of road that is in the village of Elwood. That is two lanes, rigged at 12 tons, and dumps into another village of Elwood Road. The road North Point is planning on using has already been decided in a court of law to be in the village of Elwood along with 300 feet, land, 300 feet of land to the south of this road. Every road leading in and out of this development are governed by Jackson Township or Elwood. North Point indicates 5,000 more trucks on the interstates and 10,000 cars on local roads. 
the local road interstate infrastructures cannot handle this, and I think we can all agree it needs to be addressed and repaired. How much money do you think the state will have for the infrastructure improvements after this pandemic? The so-called cold closed loop cannot be accomplished by North Point or the city without working with local communities in the state. To think other, otherwise is inaccurate. We need to all work together for a better tomorrow and not let companies like North Point pin communities against each other. This decision you made will affect the entire region for years to come. Please think about this and be a good neighbor. Please vote no. Thank you. Good morning, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you state your name, address, and make your comment, please? Hello, um, my name is Maria Pergy. I'm opposed to the North Coast Point Project, and I was hoping to give you a different perspective to consider. Uh, we are living in uncertain times. We can all feel the weight of it, and with regards to the issue of North, North Point, this pandemic is a new contributing factor. It's an unprecedented situation with completely unknowable consequences, especially where our economy is concerned. We have already seen the global impact of COVID-19 on production and a global disruption in the supply chain. Manufacturing firms who rely on imports, custom companies who rely on sales in China, and the difficulty in switching sourcing. It is daunting at best, and the true long-term impact on our national and local economies is yet to be seen. We can all say that we hope to reopen sooner rather than later, but there is no way of knowing when this will happen. Locally, especially as a result of COVID, revenue is down. For the city of Joliet, for everyone, we know this. However, this is not a time for a quick fix solution. Yes, unemployment is up, but it's not for the normal reasons. So you shouldn't put a band-aid on a broken leg, or for that matter, a leg that may not even be broken. Instead of seeing North Point as a solution because it looks so pretty on the front end, consider the potential for serious long-term consequences. And yes, I'm talking about all the things you've heard over and over and over forever, pollution and traffic and safety and destruction of open space and so on and so forth. But now I'm also talking about the uncertainty of our recovery from COVID-19. We're talking about phase reopening and continued guidance about social distancing, especially in the workplace and continued limitations on non-essential businesses. So how does all of this impact a large-scale development like North Point? You may have thought that you had all the information, but you don't anymore. Truthfully, none of us can know what the future holds. This virus has had a depressing impact on jobs and real estate. Can anyone tell me what those markets are going to look like six months from now? Some of the best economists in the world are trying to answer this question, and all they can muster is speculation. So what is the rush? Why the push to approve something of this magnitude under our current circumstances? I'm asking you again, as I'm sure you've been asked before, please vote no. Wait until you have more information about our recovery from this situation. Wait until the world has resumed its normal course. Wait until we know what that normal course will be. Furthermore, we as a larger community, and not just the city of Joliet, should consider the need for greater multi-jurisdictional planning and for responsible use and maintenance of existing infrastructure. This will be especially important as we try to recover from COVID-19. We are in a disaster locally, nationally, and globally. Recovery from any disaster can take time and considerable coordinated effort across all level, levels of government and throughout the whole community. If we want to successfully recover, if we want to come out of this on the other end with greater respect for one another and for the world in which we live, if we want to learn something from what we are going through to be a better community and not one and one that is more sustainable and more resilient in future disasters, North Point is not the way. In this time of uncertainty, with careful consideration for the future of our whole community, I ask you to please vote no on North Point today. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Is that it for this morning? Due to the uh, Joint Review Board meeting that's scheduled at noon, this was the last caller in the queue. Okay. So, so we're back at three? Yes, we would need a motion to um, suspend the hearing for Council Memo 222-20 which is the public hearing and resolution approving and authorizing execution of a pre-annexation agreement for 1,260 acres with Eastgate Logistics Park, Chicago, LLC for Compass Business Park and continue it to 3 p.m. Mayor, before that motion is made, Mayor, before that motion is made, if there's any callers that we missed, 
send an email to that public comment at joliet.gov and we'll put you back on the list. Well, just so I'm clear, are callers that we missed are people that didn't answer? Yes, people that didn't answer. Okay. So I'm actually real-time communication. I think I've sent maybe 90 emails since, since the meeting. Okay. Thank you. So is there a motion to uh, suspend the hearing for Council Memo 222-20 and reconvene at 3 p.m.? No motion. Second. In motion seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Pullman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat>